Mr. Speaker, ministers and deputy ministers present, honorable members, the Simons family, our guest speaker, Ms. Amy Tonton, the chairperson of the African Peer Review Mechanism, Mustafa Makindeche, together with the panelists of the IP APRM present, the CEO of the African Peer Review Mechanism, Dr. Ed Maluka, the representatives of uh, civic uh, organization as well as non-government organization present here today, comrades and friends. To our choir who rendered beautiful music outside, the Choir of Parliament, you are welcome. My name is Togo Didiza, and I'm your program director for this evening. On behalf of the Speaker of the National Assembly of the Parliament of South Africa, Honorable Ms. Balekambete, I wish to welcome all of you to this important event in which we honor and remember Marie Alexander Simon for her contribution in the struggle for liberation of South Africa. But more importantly, the struggle for the emancipation of women. The speaker will be able to share with you in detail why this memorial lecture this evening. In 2015, last year, reflecting on the role of parliament as the assembly in which our people expect of us to make laws that will change their conditions, but also an institution in which they can express themselves through the public representatives who are members of parliament. The speaker wondered in the beginning of the fifth parliament and brought a team of members of parliament, but also with some of the uh, members of society to reflect how best parliament can actually engage society and be able to ensure that this institution is true to its mandate. One of the things may be given her other expertise, which some of you may not know as an artist, in her mind was how do we keep the memory of the many South Africans who played a part in the liberation of our struggle? How can we ensure that heritage is kept alive so that not only for us today, but even for those who will come after us can know what these men and women have done? So as part of our celebration of Heritage Month, under the leadership of the speaker, parliament decided to have a memory project in which as parliament, we will honor particularly women who have played a contribution in our struggle. So today, 2016, is the memorial lecture in which we honor Mare Alexander and would like to thank the speaker for having allowed that we do this working with the family. And for some of you who may not know, actually this year's memory project is a memory project with a difference. We started on the 7th of November with a seminar to reflect on the works of Marie Alexander, particularly amongst working women and women in farms in particular. It was a dynamic seminar. And to you, speaker, I'll repeat it again in the presence of the family here. They were really grateful for the honor you gave them. And the importance of 7th of November to the family 
was because that was the day in which Ray Alexander set foot in South Africa. So they thought the best way of remembering her was to actually reflect on the work that she did among us. So today, the speaker agreed that even though we might have had a workshop, a seminar, but today we will do the lecture again to honor Mary Alexander. For that, we'd like to say thanks to you, Madam Speaker. Our program, for those of you who don't have it, we will have the performance of the South African Parliament, of the South African Parliament Choir, after which I will introduce Madam Speaker, who will then talk to us, and then we will have Emmy Rensin Tonton, who will deliver the lecture after which the speaker will give a token of appreciation to the family. And we have Honorable Lumka Yengeni giving us a vote of thanks. And then we network and have some snacks. That's it. So it's a short program, but it will be a lovely program, I can promise you. South African Parliament, over to you. You are allowed to join in the song and celebrate. Ray Alexander, Ray Alexander, Anna Yotanali Enam. Ray Alexander, Ray Alexander, Anna Yotanali Enam. Age Kopanana. Thank you very much to our choir. I thought I needed to ask members to join in because as I was watching, I saw some of them wondering whether in this assembly, can we stand up, can we sing? So I thought I must uh, give you permission to do so. We'll now have uh, Madam Speaker, but before I do so, there's something I want to say. You heard the news, we three in one. Midwife, womb, child, South Africa will be free. That land will be free. When our speaker wrote these words in May 1981, dedicated to Mkondo Wesizwe, she did not know, like many of us, that freedom will come in our lifetime. Through the sacrifices of Mam Alexander and other South Africans, those words she said then 
she said then, have become true. And in their memory, our speaker thought it important that in rewriting our history, that memory, as Rose Poole said, not only help us to understand the past, but gives us our responsibility for the future. Honorable Speaker. Please allow me to address sitting because of the positioning of the mice. Good evening, everybody. Uh, in particular, the Simons family. Is Mary here? Mary and John, I think. Okay. Yes, but the other members of family are here. The last one. Unfortunately, is on the 7th of November, the delegation of parliament to the SADC parliamentary forum was departing for Harare. So that's why we couldn't be with you, and I leave that delegation, had to go and sit with other delegations of parliaments of the SADC area. Uh, because our work doesn't end here. We have to go all over the place. So I'm sorry I missed that wonderful occasion. I'm quite sure it was wonderful. Members of the executive, honorable members of parliament, uh, the distinguished members led by the chairperson of the APRM, uh, Mustafa Mekidesh, a very vibrant uh, um, a panelist of the APRM together with the other panelists, Ambassador Ashraf, uh, Ambassador Dangiza from Rwanda, and our own former minister, Bridget Mabandla, together with other uh, ladies and gentlemen from the African continent, preoccupied with good governance. You are welcome. Uh, I'm very, very happy to have my former colleagues here. Uh, they, were, they were with us yesterday. I want to welcome everybody. I see honorable members, and uh, in particular also, I believe there are women from Ubuntu Rural Women's Movement, Ilita Labantu, uh, the Women on Farms Project and others present tonight. Thank you so much for coming to be with us as uh, we celebrate and remember Marie. I met her outside South Africa. Of course, her family is here and her work is, is, is what we, we are about and the record of her life which uh, Comrade Amy Thornton is going to deliver. I just want to say that there's one point that I want to emphasize about why the memory project. We, we launched it last year, September, in Johannesburg at the Freedom Park. simply because when the history is told and the heritage of the country is celebrated, we hardly ever remember the women in particular who have contributed to it. And we thought while we have the opportunity, we must use it to raise these names from the corners of our memories that tend not to remember the good work done by women. So when we launched it uh, last year in Gauteng, the first lecture was delivered by our stalwart Gertrude Schoppe, who had just turned 90, but was very vibrant as she delivered the lecture on Charlotte Matweke. We really had fun and it was very good. So this year we thought we should get uh, somebody who knows or who knew 
Comrade Ray, our leader, to come and talk to us about Ray Simons, Ray Alexander. Before she passed on, I visited her at, at the house here in Cape Town. And I remember I, we just said most of the time we were not even talking. But at some point, I don't know what happened to the photo of Comrade, uh, the old man's photograph, Jack. I saw Ray almost flip, you know. She was looking for this photograph. I, I, I don't know what had happened to it, but we found it. And then we put it on the table and sat again. And we had peace. And she, she was, you know, back to normal. As it turned out, it was the last time I, I was able to just sit with her, talk about something, and then keep quiet. And... You know, we spent about three hours. I remember that afternoon. Anyway, it is wonderful to see members of organized labor and some familiar faces from FAU and Kosatu, Nehau and Sasko, all coming together in honor of this remarkable woman who has left an indelible mark on the labor movement and the fight against injustice. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this year's annual memorial lecture, the second in what will be an annual event. This memorial lecture honors a giant of the liberation struggle and the workers struggle. I don't know, probably this name is not pronounced like the English way, Rachel Alexandrovich. Eh? Rokol Alexandrovich. More popularly known, we called her Ray Alexander. We are also very privileged to have in our midst our guest speaker, Amy here, who has been an unwavering activist against racism and patriarchy in our country before and after our people's liberation. Amy has a sharpened awareness of the divisions created by apartheid. Her activism is encapsulated in her own words, and I quote, I have never lost my sense of real outrage at injustice. I really feel outraged. And I think when I get angry enough about a situation, then I stop being scared, close quote. <laughs> I'm told that Amy began her activism at the young age of 16 years old, when she began putting up posters urging white men and women not to vote for the then National Party. A true veteran of the struggle for liberation, Amy has endured banning orders, detention, and harassment under the brutal apartheid regime. She shared Ray Alexander's passion and worked tirelessly for the recognition of the human rights of workers. She worked closely with struggle stalwart Oscar Mpeta in the Food and Canning Workers Union and is an honored recipient of the Order of Lutulu. Ladies and gentlemen, Today's memorial lecture was initially intended for Heritage Month in September. Why Heritage Month, you may ask? Well, it's simple, really. This initiative of the South African Parliament wants to ensure that both the historical and present contributions, as well as the collective experiences of South African women in particular, is recorded and finds its rightful place in the annals of history. We are also determined to ensure that the names and legacies of Ray Alexander, Charlotte Matreke, Ruth Mompati, Helen Suzman, Fatima Mie, and the many other heroes that have come before us continue to be celebrated. With these memorial lectures, we wish to emphasize that the acknowledgement of women's contributions to South African society 
should not and will not be confined to Women's Month, which we celebrate in August each year. There are many lessons we can and must draw upon from these veterans, and we must explore the profound connections with those who fought for this society to have a free and democratic South Africa that embraces all who live in it. Few can argue that women have been at the forefront of transformation in South Africa, yet their contributions to fighting injustice and bringing about social change are often underrepresented. We are determined to honor both the challenges women face, but also the leadership we possess. Women such as Ray Alexander, whom we are honoring today, played a crucial role in the liberation of South Africa. And it is important to re recount and retell their stories of sacrifice, pain, and hardship as part of the ongoing process to entrench democracy in our country. We chose to honor Ray Alexander Simons because her life and her brave actions should be a reminder to each and every one of us of our personal responsibility to stand against injustice and never underestimate the power that comes from ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Ray Alexander's life was a lesson in perseverance. By the time of her passing on the 12th September 2004, Ray Alexander was known around the world as a prominent activist for political and human rights in apartheid South Africa. Her name had become synonymous with the Food and Canning Workers Union and the Federation of South African Women. In spite of 25 years of exile from South, Afri South Africa between 1965 and 1990, she remained a consistent force in radical politics, eventually becoming the longest serving Communist Party functionary in South Africa. Women have an undeniable role to play in society, especially today. There is a wealth of untapped knowledge waiting to be absorbed by the younger generation. And it is hoped that through initiatives like this memorial lecture, this knowledge will be shared. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made massive strides in terms of gender parity in South Africa. But we know that many more challenges remain. Inequality, poverty, domestic violence, amongst others, are part of the challenges we continue to confront and need to fight together. As we honor the life of Ray Alexander today, we should not limit our commemorations to lofty eulogies. Instead, let us commit ourselves to carrying on her fight, ensuring that her passion continues to inspire us as we continue to challenge patriarchy and injustice wherever it exists. Let us continue to sh shatter any and all glass ceilings that are obstacles to women's progress. That, in my view, is how we can best thank Ray Alexander for her immense contribution to our country. We are indebted to her and her family for their sacrifice, and as a nation, we have a responsibility to keep her legacy alive. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker, for your input and also giving us a background on the memory project. We have also done my work easier by giving an introduction somehow of our guest speaker. I will now like to ask Emmy, our guest speaker, to address us. You can do so seated if you want, or you can stand. <laughs> okay. So, um, Madam Speaker, thank you for your, for your words and that excellent introduction. And um, <laughs> I finally made it to Parliament. I 
I met Ray when I was 15 years old. And I had left school after what we call JC, Standard 8. And I was going to go to Tech. I was at Tech when I was 15 and learning shorthand and typing, comments and bookkeeping. And I don't know how it happened, but I got a job at the Food and Famine Workers Union. And I typed there. And there was this lady, Ray Alexander. And she was a very extraordinary and exceptional woman. I was uh, already becoming involved with the Modern Youth Society, which uh, we started together with Audi and Dennis Goldberg and others to get youth to come together, discuss political matters, and start to become involved in political activity. And this was uh, 1948 and afterwards. But Ray ran the union. Nobody there knew that she was Mrs. Simons. And I must say that if ever there was a person who was fortunate to have a totally liberated husband as far as gender equality was concerned, it was Ray. Jack appreciated, understood, admired, and I think the children know what a role he played in their lives because when Ray started to organize the workers in the food and famine industry, she had to spend many days, many nights away from home. They were out in Tarl and Worcester, and I think one also needs to understand that the work in the food and famine industry was seasonal. <coughs> so sometimes for months there was no work at all. And so the workers were completely dependent on the farmers in the country areas and then dependent on the people who started the food processing factory. And often there was no work at all. And they were really very, very poorly paid. And it wasn't uncommon, and if any of you come from farming zones and have spoken to your grandparents, when they used to pick the fruit here in the Western Cape, the payment was often a can of wine at the end of the row of the great bushes or the street or that street or whatever it was, or the, the vegetables. So... To organize them wasn't easy. They were very, very vulnerable because they often lived on property belonging to the bosses and they only worked in the factories when the fruit had been picked and they could, and they could get a regular work for a few months of the year. So it wasn't an easy way. And Ray, all her life she spoke with a heavy Russian accent and uh, and the work and she understood the workers who spoke Afrikaans or Kosa and they understood her. And what I began to notice about her, she used she used she introduced me to coming out to Paul every night with Nana with Abrams to give lectures to the workers at the factories in Paul or rather to the shop stewards, a political education. And it wasn't long after that that the campaign for the Congress of the People and the Freedom Charter had started, and we and and history notes were written, which we went out with, and they concerned the country we live in, no, sorry, the world we live in, the country we live in, and the third lot was the need for change, and I think they were written by your father. And they were absolutely instrumental in galvanizing uh, people and that, and getting them to participate. What I began, I, I, what I began to find out was that Ray was such an extraordinary woman. I don't think it always made for the children not feeling a little bit resentful of the amount of energy, time, 
and times when Ray was away touring all over, uh, visiting various branches. And, uh, and I think, you know, it's understandable that there were times they felt quite resentful of it. But I would come to Ray's house and find her sitting there altering shirts and altering clothes for the workers of children who'd managed to get into a boarding school, and mostly they had to go to the Eastern Cape to do so. And Ray and Jack used to work their budgets by what they could give away and educate children of workers. Ray said, I don't see why workers' children should not have the right to education. And there, I many, many years later met people in London. Uh, one of them was a surgeon, uh, one of them was an economist, people who had, because of Ray, got to school and got um, a tertiary education and, you know, and um, I thought it was unfortunate that very few of them became political activists, but still, I realized today that what she did, she said, why shouldn't these children have a chance? And that was how she conducted her life. And the way in which she ran the union, Ray was absolutely adamant that people had to account for money. That because the workers at the time I was there, they used to come to a kind of joint meeting once a month and the shop stewards would bring along bags with the subs. <laughs> there were no stock orders or anything like that. They were collected. And at that time, at the beginning, they were paying one shilling a week. Uh, a shilling was more or less 10 cents or 20 cents. Not sure. Anyway, whatever. It was... That was what the workers could afford. And there were times when some of the people actually stole some of the money. And Ray had, Ray's method of dealing with it in the union was absolutely straightforward. It didn't matter if you were the chairman of the branch or the treasurer or the secretary or just an ordinary member. If money was stolen and it was uh, found out, and in these close little circles it was usually found out, the person responsible had to acknowledge that they had taken money. And they had to sign a letter with the lawyer as to how they would pay it back, no matter how long it took. And... This didn't matter if you were the secretary of the branch or just an ordinary member. And everybody in the union knew that this was the method that you deal with theft in the organization. And it was very, very important. The other thing about Ray is that she would never, ever speak to the bosses on her own. They would invite her to come and meet with their board, and but she should come on her own. She never went without representatives of the branch or the whole union or, or what the matter concerned. To work in a really honorable way like that, in those days, it was quite extraordinary. Of course, what has changed is people behave like some of the workers did, we're not talking about collecting one shilling from every member per week. We're talking about millions and millions of taxpayers' money. But in those days, Ray educated the workers that the money for the union is sacrosanct. It is sacred. It, the workers can't afford it very well, and it's got to be used properly in the union and accounted for. The other thing, Ray absolutely believed in was political education for workers. And um, I used to go with, uh, Ray, when Ray was banned and uh, after Becky was banned, Becky Lamb had took over from her and then Liz Abrams became uh, the secretary of the union. 
I when she left town on Mondays to go home to, uh, to Paul from Cape Town, I used to go with her. And then she took me to a family who had been friends as well. And they took me in for the night. And then I would go and speak to uh, uh, shop stewards and have a sort of political class. And in the morning, I would come back at uh, half past five or six in the morning with Nana and go to my work, and she would go to her office. Political education, Ray believes, was really very, very important. And um, a lot of people didn't even know that she was married to Jack because uh, it was an extraordinary relationship of two people who not only loved each other, but supported each other and had a common purpose in the way they wanted to live their life. As I say, and I will repeat it, it was sometimes tough on the kids, but I think with hindsight, <laughs> you have been through all that and come to terms with it. Um, yeah. I'm not timing myself to speak for half an hour because I'm 84 now and I, I even forget the time. <laughs> so, I didn't look when I started. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, you can continue. But I want to tell you, okay, I'm going to tell you some stories about Ray that I experienced with her. You know, Ray had a very strong Latvian accent. And uh, she could speak Russian, she could speak Yiddish. What else did your mother speak? Polish. 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 And? She could Russian and Polish. Yes, yes. She, wa she was quite a linguist. And, but everything was with this uh, very heavy uh, accent from Eastern Europe. And, one, and then eventually she, uh, oh, Ray was elected to Parliament. After they kicked Sam Khan out, and was there, was there someone between Ray and Sam Khan? No, I think the next one was Ray. <laughs> they had elected Ray as an African representative. And she came to Parliament to come in and they wouldn't let her in. They turned her away. Uh, yeah. She, she followed Sam Khan as an elected communist representative. And, but she didn't get inside. But Sam got inside the door. He was in Parliament for a couple of years, very popular, brilliant speaker, but Ray didn't get in. And, uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, she had a very distinctive voice. And one day, I get a phone call, and this accent, which I would recognize anywhere, says, be there. Be there? Be where? I haven't got an arrangement to see Ray. We were both banned. We weren't allowed to meet. Uh, why is she using the phone? So I thought, well, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I can't phone her. It's against the rules of underground work. <laughs> so I just thought, well, there's nothing I can do. The next thing I hear, tap, tap, tap on my door. And there's Ray. What she meant by be there is stay there, I'm coming to see you. But I didn't get the message. <laughs> um, the other thing I remember, she told me, she used to tell me a lot of stories of, of the past before my time, when she was very active in the Communist Party. And there was a comrade on the executive who was making a point with her. Oh. So Ray went to the meeting of, <laughs> of the committee and she reported him. So I said, so what did they say, Ray? She said they just laughed. Anyway, I got a lot of political education through Ray. She certainly was an example. I don't think she was a saint, and she, and, but I think it was tough on the kids, 
because for Ray, the, the work in the union was absolutely um, sacred, had to be consistent, had to be honest, and the workers' lives were so tough and they were so exploited that this was her real calling in life. I don't think we meet many people like that now. And uh, now you see, now I'm having a memory lapse. Um, <laughs> no, I'll tell you, no, no, I'm coming, I'm just going, I'm going to tell you the story that I've told so often I don't forget it. She was once telling me uh, about early days in the struggle. And she happened to be in Johannesburg, and the garment workers were on strike. And I don't know which of these wonderful women, you know, these powerful women, Johanna Cornelius and the women of the Garment Workers Union in those early days. But they called a meeting on the steps of the City Hall, which was the general venue for meetings in Johannesburg in those days. And it was ab about a strike. And one of the shop stewards came to the microphone to speak. And all of a sudden, she says he threw up his arms and he collapsed. When the meeting was over, she went uh, to whoever it was who had been speaking. She said, what, what happened? What happened to that man? Ah, says the lady of the Garment Workers Union. We didn't want him talking to the workers. He was a scab. So we, I grabbed him from behind and twisted and he fainted. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at her with wide eyes. <laughs> and then she leans forward, puts her hand on my arm and looks me in the eyes and says with absolute seriousness, comrade, we must learn these weapons of struggle. <laughs> and I left out a piece of the story and it's just come back into my mind. Part of the story was, she says how shocked she was when she saw what the, the garment workers' women were doing to the, to the scabs. But then she says it is 1930, I don't know what, and the workers are on strike and the police were attacking the workers, this is in the Sweetie Fanny, and she and her sister Dora, they laid out three policemen by the same method. And that's when she says, comrade, we must learn these methods of struggle. <laughs> I don't know if I've done 30 minutes or not, if I haven't, forgive me, but I think it's very lovely that Ray is being honored here and very, very well deserved, a most extraordinary woman who came from a foreign country, not speaking the language, and was able to make a contribution that is well remembered today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Emmy. I'm sure this last part of the story, <laughs> it's something that we'd all remember, <laughs> some lessons that we have to learn <laughs> on how to deal with the problem <laughs> in a nice way where majority cannot even see. But the tactic work, I'm sure it can still work today. But thank you very much for bringing Marie into life. You've taken us through the journey to understand some of the things that we wouldn't read about in the books, about the real person whom you interacted with, about the family who you knew intimately, but also about an activist who was very committed and was able to sacrifice a lot, even family life, in order to make a difference in the lives of so many. Can we give Emmy another round of applause?
Amy, when you said you have a memory lapse, you reminded me of one of my friends who said, the more we grow older like a computer, people don't understand. When the server is full, it takes time when you reboot because it has to um, get all the memory that you have stuffed in there. So don't worry, you are still getting that memory from the computer. Thank you very much. Don't worry, it was very good. We didn't even see that you missed anything. But thank you very much once again. Honorable Speaker, it's now your opportunity or you will give it somewhere else or it's on the side. There's something that I was told uh, you have got a task that you have to perform in your capacity as the speaker. Or UA me to Emmy. A photo session. It is. Um, we have two figures, a man and a woman, on both sides of a beautiful little bowl with the logo of our parliament. Okay. Now, the logo of our parliament uh, has a drum at the center, which was a method of communication of the olden days. And on top, you have our national flower, the protea. And then you have figures. Why you have these figures? These are people. Because at the bottom is our constitution and the words, we the people which are the first words in our constitution. That's why you have these figures that are on both sides of the drum. So we hope, Amy, you will enjoy Thank you, that's this a, gift that's and remember yeah. us and remember this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Thank you very much, Speaker. When you mentioned that uh, Marie, while she was elected to parliament and she never got in, I understood your first words when you said, finally, in parliament. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, I will now ask our chairperson of the Labour Portfolio Committee, Honorable Yengeni, to give a vote of thanks. Thank you, uh, Program Director. I think I will sit down because I have some guests behind me. Um, honorable Speaker, our comrade, Ms. Thompson, uh, friends and family of Comrade Alexander, a program director, honorable chairperson of the National Council of the National Assembly. I am honored to have been requested to give the vote of thanks on behalf of Parliament of South Africa. I am one of the uh, privileged few who managed to serve under the leadership of Comrade Ray Alexandra in exile when she was still a leader of the South African Congress of Trade Unions, which is uh, SAFTE, that gave birth to 
medical surgeon. While trying to prepare for the vote of thanks, I stumbled across an interview that Comrade Ray had with Stephen Robbins and Emmanuel Satna on the 20th of July, 1992, and January 1996 in Cape Town. One of the questions directed at uh, Comrade Ray said, I quote, do you think the fact that you were born Jewish helped you as a woman? Perhaps Jewish women have more possibilities for being assertive, close quotes. And she responded by saying, I quote, I didn't think of myself as a Jewish because I just felt that I belong to the world. I am internationalist, which is true, she was. I remember reacting very strongly to the Jewish prayer, which Orthodox Jewish men say in the morning. Thank you, God, for making me a man and not a woman. I don't know whether I was five years old or six, but I refused to accept this prayer. My grandfather, who was a very orthodox Jew, demanded that if I don't accept some prayer or other, I must leave the table. Of course, my mother didn't like the idea that I should be sent away from the table. So she brought me food in my room. I had to leave the table, but I made my point. Yusif and my father was in agreement with me, close quotes. Ladies and gentlemen, honored and distinguished guests, we are indeed counted today as one of the most blessed to stand upon the shoulders of these great and selfless heroines, and among them, our very own, Mama Ray Alexander Simons, Ruth First, Ruth Mumpati, Lillian Woi, and the others. To them, we continue to remain forever indebted. Siabulela. This confirms the age old Tosa adage. Ama Kobokazana. Angalalin Bilin. Yazimi Kunyimbilukin. Today, our African National Congress the oldest liberation movement in the African continent continues to produce women of great stature. These are the daughters of the soil who continue to successfully jack life as mothers who must raise their own offspring as responsible and law-abiding citizens of this country. Whilst producing this good piece of legislation that continue to have our nation being ranked as having one of the best democracies in the world. Having said the above, please allow me to express our deepest sense of gratitude to our very own speaker, comrade. Baleka Mbete.
for she continues to be the proverbial tree that continues to stand the test of time. Whilst our national legislature has been the most unprecedented political turbulence since the historic advent of 1994, your leadership as speaker has seen our ship being steadied through what could be considered very rough seas. In this regard, we want to thank you for visionary leadership during these trying times in our parliament. To these great leaders, we say Malibongwe. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lumka. On behalf of the speaker, I would like to invite all of you as our guests to the uh, old assembly dining room, which is on the left when you get out of this room, where we'll have some refreshments. Thank you very much. We've come to the end of our program.